Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a short video on things you can insert into your micro Word, uh, Microsoft Word documents. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend our time on the Insert tab in the Microsoft Word um, for Windows interface. I believe there's also an Insert related tab on other operating systems. And in this tab, you've got all sorts of choices of things that you can insert into Word. You, we're not going to worry about inserting pages. We did that in another video, but you can insert tables, pictures, shapes, icons, smart art, charts, which you would actually want to uh, insert from a chart that is in maybe an Excel document. We're not going to get into that. You can also look for add-ins and online videos. You can insert hyperlinks and so on. And you also can insert headers and footers, which is treated with in a different uh, video. What we're going to do in here is just insert three or four simple things to see how it works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with inserting a picture. When you click this, you could pick something from your own computer. You can look for stock images that are part of the Microsoft stock images, or you could search for something online. I like to search online when I can. When you search for something online, and let's see, I would like to look at, what do I want to look at? Um, I might as well take a picture of Seattle, see what they have for Seattle. And then I type it in, click enter, and I'm going to choose Creative Commons only. It may not give me that many choices, but it means that if I were to choose an image, it's one that's considered public domain or is usable for free um, at, with, with or without attribution. So I'm going to pick this nice picture of Seattle during either a, I guess that would be a, a sun. It's beautiful. <laughs> Trying to interpret the direction. And here is a lovely picture. I clicked away from the picture. I'm going to make my dark document view a little smaller so I can see the whole image. Now notice up at the top here we have our standard tabs including my developer and acrobat tab that you probably don't have. If I click on the picture to activate it we suddenly get two things. We get a shape format contextual tab and a picture format contextual tab. The shape format will let me do things like add a border to it or um, add color into it or, you know, add, if I were to have text in here, like there's text right here, so select it, I could come here and make it all green, I think. There we go. I could click this and um, back in the shape format, the shape would be, um, have to do with well, let's, let's make it like orange. The shape is what's the bounding of the image, and there happens to extend below to be where the text is. That is really hard to see. So I'm going to change it to no fill. Um, you could also align this text. So if I were to come here and click it and say I would like it to be aligned to the, to the top, I think it probably already is. And if I want to change the direction of it, I could. If I wanted to simply make it right, um, right aligned, I could go to my Home tab and click up here. But back to the, the shape format. Uh, let's click away. OK, next we're going to take a look at the picture format. This has to do with the image itself. In the shape format picture styles group, you can actually pick some preset styles like this. Let's see, this one's kind of cool, and it gives a bit of a shadow. Or you could just leave it the way it kind of was, and you could actually draw, not really draw, but you could choose a picture border yourself. So I'm going to choose one that's a rust colored, and I can also come in here and I can scroll down and change the weight of it. Make it thinner like that. I could make it much bigger if I wanted. I could choose more outline colors. I could change it to dashes and so on. So this, I think I'll make it three points. There we go. So that's something I could do there. Picture effects, you could play with this sort of thing on your own, and we'll try it with other things. But I could also change the size of the picture. So up here, some of the things you insert, you could change the height or the width, and it will remain consistent to the size. What do I mean? If I change this to three inches and click Enter, Notice how the picture changes proportionally in size. But what's interesting is that it separates itself from this text down here. 
and it seems to separate itself from the box. Microsoft makes things more and more difficult. And the interesting thing is if I were to try to make this smaller, it would make the picture smaller too. So I'm going to control Z a couple of times and I could come down here and try this, just drag and it would get the bounding bar. But the thing is it's, it's, it's potentially I could uh, actually get it out of alignment with being proportional. So you're going to have to play with that a bit. It's different for different types of images. A lot of images you get won't have any text that comes in with it, so it shouldn't be an issue for everything. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert something else. Let's just insert a basic shape. Insert a shape, and I'm going to pick this. I don't know what this is, but what happens when you're going to insert a shape, it actually, notice how my cursor has changed to this kind of dark crosshairs, it's loaded with the image. So I have to hold my um, left cursor mouse key down and drag, and then I get the shape. And with the shape, you get only a shape format contextual menu. I could come in here, and there's no, no text in it. So it's not really going to do any good to mess with that, but I could come here and change this so it's a nice pale yellow. I could change the outline so that it's a darker yellow. I could change the outline so that it's a bigger weight, etc. I could click away and I no longer can see the contextual menu, or I can click it, make sure I'm in the menu, and I can see if there are other things I want to do with it. Okay, so an important thing to know about with shapes and images and things that you insert is that you are going to need to make sure it's accessible for people who happen to be um, using a screen reader. Because a screen reader needs to be able to place what it is that is being seen and interpret it um, for the person. So for that, you will always want to make sure that when you create a shape, pull in an image, use SmartArt or anything else, that you go into the contextual menu and you look for the alt text. And in the alt text, you can choose to mark as decorative. This is a decorative icon. Or if it was something really important, like a logo, you might say something like image of the so and so logo. And then, you know, period. And then you can close this and it will add this alt text, which means that when you do an accessibility check of your document before you distribute it somewhere, you'll be in good shape. A third thing we're going to go ahead and put in uh, is an insert of something called SmartArt. SmartArt can be a really useful tool for sharing a little blurb of information in some sort of hierarchical or process-oriented way. And there's all sorts of basic layouts that you can choose from. So I'm going to just pick something and then show you how it works. So I'm going to pick this, this interesting little hexagon cluster. And what you'll see here is a preview of what the hexagon cluster might look like, but it won't necessarily be in these colors. It depends on the palette and the theme that you're using, and it may just come in all as one color to start so that you can change at a later time. So I'm going to click OK, and this is what I get. Now it seems to be laying over my, my shape, so I'm going to drag that out of the way. And this gives you a chance to put text and images in. This is interesting. So I could insert pictures from icons. So I'm going to click icons and I'm going to just put an acorn in. You know, put that there and then I'll come over here and I'll click another icon. See what looks interesting. Glasses. <laughs> Those are funny looking glasses and there they go. And it's sizing it to fit the bounding box of the item there. And then let's go back and choose icons again. Let's see if there's something else I like. Oh, let's do an alarm clock. And there we go. And then you could type text. It moves around sometimes. Okay. But here's something else I want to bring to your attention. When Two things. One, when you click on your smart art, there is a smart art design tab. So you can come in and change colors, which we'll do in a moment. And then there's also a related format tab for smart art design, which means that you can do changes to the text itself. But the other thing I want to bring to your attention to is somewhere on the border of your smart art, you'll see a faint little arrow. And if you click that, a flyout box will pop out so that you could type here. And then you can change the hierarchy of things on process oriented uh, smart art. But so, for instance, here I might just say acorn. Oops, that's not going to work. So that's right next to the clock. So maybe I should have typed clock, right? This one's very efficient. Glasses. You could type in here. 
or you can come down and you could type right into the text here, acorn. You could do either way. Now, this flyout box will not print, neither will this outline, any of these outlines, but you can always close that up when you're ready. Okay, so we have this. Oops. Click it, go to Smart Art Design, and take a look at Change Colors. So you can get multiple colors. Let's do greens and stuff. Now it's interesting. I'm not sure why it got rid of the images. So it may be that you have to make uh, the change of color in that. But let's go ahead and see about changing to a different layout altogether. Something where we can see process. Okay, so here we are, have here. Pull this little arrow out here. We've got clock. I'm going to press enter. Now the thing is it makes another box because it's the same hierarchy. But what if I wanted something to go under the word clock? I'm going to demote. Oh, look what happens. Okay, alarm. And then I'm going to come over to glasses. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to demote this, which is the equivalent of like adding another bulleted item that's pushed inwards. And I'll type in here, I. And then for acorn, I'll do the same thing. And I'll demote. And I'll put squash. There's acorn squashes. So that's a little tip on how smart art works. Um, just as, as a tool. Now you would then decide what you want to do with it. But anyway, you have the ability to look at the smart art design, change colors, change themes, change intensities. So say if I change the intensities, I can come up here within the styles and so on. Also, the format means that I could come up here. I could either use control B for bold or I could come up here and I could say, you know, I'd like the text fill to be green and the text outline to be white. It looks odd, but I can do things like that. Let's see if there was, there was one more thing I wanted to show you, and that was a table. Um, so we're going to come down here. We're going to insert a table. Looks like we're going to come down here to insert the table. There we go. Insert table. This gives you a little user interface um, that's dynamic so that you could choose up to 10 wide and 10 or 8 long. If you decide you want something that's more than that, you can insert table and then choose the insert table here. And you could type in, say, 12 columns and 12 rows. So you have different options like that. I'm just going to do a really simple table and then write in it. So I'm going to just choose four wide and three long. And you can, in a table, hover over any of the interior columns and hold your mouse uh, left click mouse key down and then drag make sure that you see that little double arrow you could type in here and when you're inside of the table you have a table design so that you can come in here and you could choose some basic themes like this you can choose to have a header row this is the header row, and I'm going to make this so it's a little, little easier to read. What does a header row mean in context of tables? It means that when you have a table, you're going to have a bunch of information in columns. Uh, each row is a record belonging to, say, like one customer. And it would include their first name, their last name, their address, their zip code, their email address. That's a record. But in each column would be the data that's representing that piece of information for that customer. First name column would have the customer's first name. Last name column would have the customer's last name. So we'd say like first name, last name. So that is the header of the column. And then the LJ, Bothell. This is a record. So this is a header row and this is a record. So when you actually have header rows selected in your table design, it makes the header row look different. If you don't have it selected, you technically could make a table that has no header row because you're using it to display something that, that just needs the data. But this is what the header row means. The total row would be if you had numbers, it would be able to do some very limited adding up of it. And then you could choose first column or banded columns. Right now the banded the columns are now banded. If I turn that off, the rows are banded. Banded meaning you can see green and white, green and white, and I could turn that off so you see that.
So that's a little bit about tables. So that should be enough to give you a head start on understanding and playing with the insert um, items here in Microsoft Word, including the contextual menus that show up with it. So each item will have one that will represent what it is, a table design, an image design, smart art design, and they may or may not have an additional tab like layout or format that lets you do things like change the orientation of items in there, um, change the context of the text itself, the color, the outline, and so on. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you.